In chapter one, we learned that quantitative data can be discrete or continuous. The number of cans of Coca-Cola sold by the gas station near your house today is an example of a discrete variable. The volume of gasoline sold by the same gas station is an example of a continuous variable. Because quantitative data is always numeric, arithmetic operations are meaningful. In this chapter, we will compute the sample statistics such as the mean, standard deviation, skew, and correlation. The sample mean, or average, provides an estimate of the center of the data. The mean tells you how good you are. Do you have a high or low free throw shooting average? If your average is high, you're considered a good free throw shooter. Other measures of location include the median, mode, quartiles, and percentiles. The sample standard deviation is a common measure of dispersion. It tells you how consistent something is. If you are consistently hitting around 55% of your free throws from game to game, your standard deviation will be small. Although you are bad at shooting free throws, you are a consistently bad one. Other measures of dispersion include the range, interquartile range, and variance. The sample skew indicates whether the distribution of the data appears to be symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. The sample correlation indicates the likelihood of two variables being related. Winning percentage of the football team and attendance at home football games are positively related. Hence, their correlation is close to one. In the first part of chapter three, we study several measures of location, which includes the mean, median, mode, percentiles, and quartiles. If these measures are computed using sample data. They are called sample statistics. The daily presidential polls leading up to an election are an example of sample statistics called the sample proportion. If these measures are computed, measures meaning the mean, the mode, percentiles, and quartiles, if they're computed using data from the population, these measures are called population parameters. The result of the presidential election is an example of a population parameter, known as the population proportion. A sample statistic is referred to as the point estimator of the corresponding population parameter. It's a procedure. When you plug numbers into the procedure, you get a numeric value or point estimate of the population parameter. The population mean of a data set is the average of all data values. For example, if we had the people and money and time to ask everyone that worked in America last year how much money they earned, we'd have to add up roughly 140 million workers' earnings and then divide this by 140 million. We use the Greek letter M, which is pronounced mu, to note the population mean, m, mean, which is convenient because mu and mean both begin with the letter M. The letter X with subscript 1 is the value of the variable X for element 1. If the first element in the population is George Wilson, who works full-time at Walmart making $15,456 a year, X1 is equal to $15,456. If the second element in the population is Tom Hanks, the actor who makes, I don't know, $15 million a year, X2 is equal to $15 million. The three dots that follow X2 represent the concept of yada, 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 or etc., etc., etc. If we don't yada, 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 we would have to write out all 140 million workers' income in the numerator of the population mean, which wouldn't fit on this particular slide. If the 140 millionth element of the population is Jill Jorgensen, a nurse at a local hospital making $28,845 a year, then Xn is equal to $28,845. We divide 
this sum of 140 million workers earnings by big N which is equal to 140 million using big N is convenient because the phrase number of people in the population number of people in the population begins with the letter N another way of writing the population mean mu involves writing the number or writing the numerator as XI to the right of the symbol big sigma big sigma is the Greek letter capital S which is convenient because both sigma and sum start with the letter S XI equals the earnings of the ith person in the US labor market big sigma next to XI sums up all of the N observations of the data again N denotes the size of the population we use N for the population because we use little n for the size of the sample because the sample is a subset of the population being studied again big sigma written next to XI means we sum up the N observations of variable X the sample mean of a data set is the average of the data values in a sample drawn from the population being studied because it's too costly to ask 140 million workers how much they earned last year we could ask 60,000 people how much they earned our government does this each month when it conducts the current population survey known as a CPS we used the bar over the letter X to denote the sample mean of the variable X in cases of multiple multiple variables we would use a bar over the letter Y to denote the sample mean of variable Y variable X could be say the earnings of American workers whereas Y could denote the years of education those workers have attained the sample mean is a point estimator of the population mean if the first element in the CPS is Valerie Cochetta a bank teller making nineteen thousand four hundred thirty three dollars a year X1 is equal to nineteen thousand four hundred thirty three dollars a year if the second element in the CPS sample is Timmy Johnson an auto mechanic making eighteen thousand four ninety eight dollars a year X2 is equal to eighteen thousand four ninety eight dollars a year yada 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 if the sixtieth element in the CPS sample is Barakuli a waiter making thirteen thousand eight hundred forty five dollars a year then XN is equal to thirteen thousand eight hundred forty five dollars after adding these sixty thousand numbers up we divide the sum by sixty thousand using little n is convenient because the phrase number of people in the sample begins with the letter n and little n is reserved for the sample which is a subset of the population which is of size big N another way of writing the sample mean X bar involves writing numerator as XI to the right of the symbol big Sigma big Sigma is the Greek letter for a capital S which is convenient because both Sigma and sum start with the letter S hence big Sigma next to XI means we sum up all little n observations of the data little n again is the size of the sample which is appropriate because the sample is a subset of the population being studied which is of size capital N big sigma written next to XI again means we sum up all n observations of variable X the most common numerical descriptive statistic is a sample mean in our Hudson auto repair example a simple mean is found by summing up all 50 observations of tune-up parts cost the sum equals three thousand nine hundred forty nine dollars dividing this by the size of the sample 50 yields a sample mean of seventy eight dollars and ninety eight cents the sample mean estimates the population or true mean which in most cases won't we won't know the probability that the sample mean is exactly equal to the population mean is zero because the population mean is some unknown value 
The symbol mean, on the other hand, could theoretically be one of infinite many values on the number line. The median is another measure of central location. It is equal to the mean when the distribution is symmetric. The value in the middle of a data set is the median. If there is no middle number, which occurs when the data has an even number of observations, it is the average of the two middle numbers. To find the median, you first must order the data from minimum to the maximum. Whenever the data has extreme values or is skewed, the median is the preferred measure of central location because it represents the value that splits the distribution into the upper and lower halves. A few extreme large incomes or property values can inflate the mean. The median is a measure of location most often reported for annual income and property value data. Why? Well, consider the incomes of Bill Gates and LeBron James. They are just as likely to be selected in a survey of 50 Americans as you are, because each of us has a probability of being selected of about 1 in 300 million. If they or others with large incomes aren't in the sample, the sample mean is probably pretty close to the sample's median. However, if one of them, by chance, shows up in a sample of 50 Americans, then the sample mean is going to be in the millions, whereas the sample median will not. To compute the median for an odd number of observations, say 7, put the data in ascending order as I'm doing here. Then pick the middle number. In this case, the median is 19. Four observations, or 57% of the observations, are less than or equal to 19. Similarly, four observations, or 57% of the observations, are greater than or equal to 19. For odd sample sizes, these percentages get closer to 50% as a sample size increases. To compute the median for an even number of observations, say 8, again, put the data in ascending order as I'm doing here. Then pick the two middle numbers. Here the two middle numbers are 19 and 26. The median is the average of the two when there's an odd number of observations in a variable, the median is a member or is an element of that variable. When there's an even number, the median is not in the actual data. Here the median is 22.5. Now, 50% of the observations are less than 22.5. 50% of the observations are larger than 22.5. When you have an even number of observations, the percentages are always going to be 50%. To compute the median for the Hudson Auto Repair example, first note that the sample size is 50, which is even. The data is also in ascending order. So we split the data in two parts. 25 in the lower half and 25 observations in the upper half. Since there is no middle number, the median is found by averaging the 25th, which is 75, and the 26th, which is 76, data values. The median is the average of these two numbers, which is equal to 75.50. In this example, the median is below the mean, which was $78.98. This is typical for distributions that are skewed right, which is the case here. We saw this in chapter 1, and we'll, we will revisit it later in this chapter. The mode is the data value with the highest frequency. Notice that the data from our Hudson Auto Repair example is sorted. Sorting the data makes finding the mode easier. Note, there could be multiple modes, which are going to be near the median and the mean most likely. The frequencies of 52 and 57 are both equal to 1 because there's only one 
value each in this data set. All numbers between the minimum and the maximum not in the data set, for example, 53, 54, 55, 56, and so on, all have frequencies of 0. The frequency of 62 is 4. The frequencies of 65, 66, and 67 are equal to 1. The frequency of 68 is 3. The frequency of 69 is 3. 70 has a frequency of 0. 71 has a frequency of 2. 72 has a frequency of 2. 73 has a frequency of 1. 74 has a frequency of 2. 75 has a frequency of 3. 76, 77, and 78 all have a frequency of 1. 79's frequency is 3. 80's is 2. 82, 83 have a frequency of 1. 84 has a frequency of 0. 85 has a frequency of 1. Uh, 86 and 87 have a frequency of 0. 88, 89 have frequencies of 1. 90's frequency 0. 91's frequency 1. 90's frequency 0. 93's frequency is 1. 97 has a frequency of 3. 98 has a frequency of 1. 99 has a frequency of 1. 100 has a frequency of 0. 101 has a frequency of 1. 102, 103 have frequencies of 0. 104 has a frequency of 1. 105 has a frequency of 2. 105 or 106 to 108 have frequencies of 0. And then frequency then 109's frequency is uh, 1. So the mode is 62 because it has the highest frequency. A percentile provides information about how the data are spread over the interval from the minimum value in the data to the maximum value in the data. Emissions test scores for colleges and universities are frequently reported in terms of percentiles. The pth percentile of a data set is a value such that at least p percent of these items take on this value or less and at least 100 minus p percent of these items take on this value or more. The median is a special percentile, namely the 50th percentile, because the median is the value such that at least 50 percent of the items take on this value or less and at least 100 minus 50 or 50 percent of the items take on this value or more. To compute percentiles, first put the data in ascending order, just like we did with the median. Do this from the minimum value to the maximum value. Then compute the compute i, which is the index number that identifies the position of the pth percentile. The pth percentile is the ith value of the sorted data. The index number i is equal to p divided by 100 times the sample size. Now if i is not an integer, you round i up to the nearest integer. The pth percentile is the value in the ith position of the sorted data. However, i is an integer the pth percentile is the average of the value in the ith and the i plus one -th positions of the sorted data. This was the case when we found the 50th percentile, also known as the median, in our Hudson Auto ex Repair example. Recall that we averaged the 25th and 26th values of the data. Hence, i must have been equal to 25 in that case. The 80th percentile in the Hudson Auto Repair example is found after the data is sorted, which it is. The next number is equal to p divided by 100 times the sample size of n. Now the sample size here is 50, and we want the 80th percentile, so p is equal to 80. 
This is equal to 40, which is an integer. So the 80th percentile is found by averaging the 40th and 41st data values, which are 93 and 97. This is the 40th observation. That is the 41st observation. Hence, the 80th percentile is equal to the average of 93 and 97, which equals 95. Notice that the 80th percentile of $95 is not in the data set. According to the first part of the percentile definition, at least 80 percent of the items take on the value of 95 or less. There are 40 values in the red box, all of which are less than 95. 40 divided by 50 is equal to 0.8 or 80 percent. According to the second part of the percentile definition, at least 100, at least 100 minus 80 or 20 percent of the items take on a value of 95 or more. There are 10 values in the red box, all of which are greater than 95. 10 divided by 50 is equal to 0.2 or 20 percent. Like the median, which is the 50th percentile, the quartiles of a data set are special percentiles. The first quartile is the 25th percentile, or the median of the lower half of the data. The second quartile is the 50th percentile, or the median of the data. The third quartile, quartile is the 75th percentile, or the median of the upper half of the data. The three quartiles, quartiles split the data into four quarters. The first quartile is 25th percentile. Using the sorted data of our Hudson Auto Repair example, the first quartile is computed by computing its location, which is denoted I. The next number I is equal to P divided by 100 times the sample size. The sample size is 50, and we're looking for the 25th percentile, which is the same thing as the first quartile. Here, i, the index number, is equal to 12.5, which is not an integer. So we round this up to 13. The 25th percentile is the 13th value, which is 69. The third quartile is the 75th percentile. Using the sorted data again, the third quartile is found by computing its location, which is denoted i. With P equals 75, 75th percentile, and N equal to 50, I is equal to 37.5, which is not an integer, so we round that up to 38. The 75th percentile is the 38th value in the sort of data, which is equal to 89.